so um, my name is Anthony Constantine. I'm a principal engineer at Intel, and with me is Paul Coddington. He's a mechanical engineer at Amphenol, and we are also the co-chairs of the SFFTA, um, which is acronym SOUP, although SFF stands for SFF. It does not stand for anything. But we are a technical affiliate within CINEA, and we're gonna talk about what we've been doing over the last 12 months. So I guess first off, just a high level, for those of you that don't know what SFFTA is, we, like I said, we're a technical working group. We develop the specifications for effectively a lot of hardware mechanical things. Storage media, storage networks, and pluggable solutions, you know, and you can use your imagination of to what that means. But, you know, our specifications ultimately cover c cables, connectors, cages, form factors, basically the, you know, the hands-on type things that you're going to insert into a server. Um, you know, also the transceivers, we deal with management interfaces, so some of the, you know, more um, electrical, physical type things that go along with having cables, connectors, form factors, etc. So we are a pretty large group. We actually have 76 com member companies and probably somewhere around uh, 500 um, members, um, participants. Um, and you know, we vary across several different you know, um, expertises. Like for instance, I'm at a CPU company, Paul's at a uh, connector cable company, and other stuff, among a lot of other things. <laughs> But we have a pretty wide um, we have a pretty wide group, and so that's like what we said. We kind of span all sorts of uh, different places. So, so kind of just from a stats long term, like I said, we're 76 member companies. We're managing 160 published specifications. That's plus or minus a couple depending on the day. Um, we currently have um, we're currently revising 15 specifications and we have eight new specifications um, going right now. Um, our charts effectively what you see below. We have a main SFF um, and then we have the subgroups. We have the connector subgroup and transceivers to kind of help divide the work accordingly. <laughs> um, our specifications are not only defined by CINEA itself, you know, we don't only use them there, but um, they're used by other organizations as well. We've got, and you can kind of see the uh, acronym soup that we've got listed below here. So, our latest publications. What have we been doing on summer vacation? So, in the last year, we've published four new specifications. We have SFFTA 1033, 1031, 1027. And I know that's a bunch of numbers. Um, Paul is going to go through in more detail what each of those specifications do, what their applications are, and the changes that we've made. Um, well, actually, he's going to go over the, the revisions of the seven specifications. So, we've actually published these ones, but we've found different ways to either enhance them or fix errata or just... Um, modify them in some way that would become more useful to everyone. And so Paul is going to go through those changes in much more detail. So. I'm not quite as tall as he is. Uh, <laughs> all right, so first off, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, I'm going to cover the, the four um, brand new specifications that we've published. Um, the first one I'm going to talk about here is the SFFTA 1033 document. Uh, this is for an internal high speed cable and module uh, connector system. Um, it's, uh, it's essentially, you can see in the uh, upper right hand corner of that little power connector. Um, it's essentially that. Plus, we've, add, we've added um, to this connector a, uh, either a by 8 or a by 16. The example shown here is a by 16. Um, so it adds 16 lanes of high speed traffic uh, to that uh, power connector. And there's also, in this specification, uh, there's uh, two higher power 
versions of it. Uh, this one is the standard 21 amp, but there's also a uh, 33 amp and a 55 amp um, variety that are added to that. And the um, in the by eight and by 16 versions of this, the those are compatible with the SFFTA 1016, um, which is uh, another document I'm going to talk about in a couple minutes. Um, that one is uh, um, basically you can see in the in the picture in the um, bottom left. Um, it shows where you can actually plug in two of the uh, uh, SFFT8-1016 cables into that single uh, connector module there and uh, along with the power cable or in the example on the far right uh, you can have a cable assembly that includes all of those all in, all in one cable. Um, and these can be obviously used for um, inbox cables within within a, a system for PCIe or SAS. Uh, next one I'm going to talk about here is the SFFTA 1031. Um, in the SFF, we are referring to this as SFP2. Um, and basically, this is the uh, mechanical specification for the cage connector and module um, and this is intended for uh, SFP applications at um, 112 gigabits per second and beyond. Uh, they are compatible with backwards compatible with pre previous generations of SFP um, including uh, the SFP Plus and SFP 28 modules, and um, and you can also um, you can also use these uh, modules uh, for you know like the 50, 50 gigabit per second PAM4, uh, which is marketed as you know SFP 56. Um, um, it can also uh, be used or you could use the SFP28 modules um, to design, you know, for the SFP56. Um, and again, these are very popular with uh, Ethernet and fiber. Um, you'll see these connecting uh, network and storage switches, patch panels, and servers. Um, next, what I'm going to talk about here is. Uh, it's very close relative. The SFF TA 1027. Uh, we're, we're in the SFF. We're calling this the QSFP2. Um, it is the uh, mechanical specification for the uh, connector cage and module. Um, and uh, this is again uh, designed for um, applications for uh, QSFP. Uh, applications for uh, 112 gigabits per second and beyond over four lanes instead of one lane from the previous slide, and uh, and then <clears throat> so one of the one of the differences in this uh, specification from prior generations of QSFP is that the connector cage and module are all in the same document. Um, in the past, you know, previous generations, you'd had a separate mechanical specification for each one of those. So we've combined them all into a single document, which we hope is more uh, user-friendly to the uh, people that, that need to see this stuff. And, uh, uh, and it, of course, is uh, backwards compatible with the previous generations of QSFP. And, uh, and you can also use these um, you can use these cables with uh, uh, previous generation hosts um, to uh, obtain better thermals. Um, you, I'll point out here in the uh, figure at the top right there, the, um, it shows four different modules. The type one is um, essentially the same envelope as the 
uh, previous generation QSFP. Uh, the, the other three, uh, the type two, is you can see is a obviously a little bit longer. It's six out a little bit more um, outside the, the uh, um, device that it's plugged into. Um, but um, the other two, the type two A and the type two B, uh, they also uh, add on top of that uh, different versions of a uh, heat sink. And so each of those um, will give uh, uh, opportunity for uh, some better thermal um, performance. Um, and then again, these are uh, interconnects that are very popular uh, with connecting switches and patch panels, servers, and um, they can, they're used with fiber and ethernet. Um, Oh, one other thing I'll point out is uh, we've added a uh, the uh, uh, two by one stacked cage and connector. Um, previous generations, uh, the specification only in included the one by one, um, and uh, there were numerous uh, products in the market that were two by ones, but they had to uh, kind of. You know, they may have ended up being a bit more vendor specific uh, because of the fact that it wasn't de defined in a uh, industry document. And so it could have been uh, issues with uh, different implementations. And so by adding the two by one, uh, that should improve that for future use. Uh, the next one here is uh, SFF 8612. Uh, it's called the Mini Link uh, four uh, by four and by eight shielded connector. Uh, this one is um, uh, well. It's essentially the um, SAS version of the PCIe's OcuLink connector, and. Uh, and its mating plug is the SFF 8611, which was published actually quite a while ago. Um, this one sat around for a little while, uh, waiting for somebody to uh, uh, take care of some uh, uh, letter ballot comments that we had received on that. Uh, but we eventually, we finally did get that one published. Uh, and now I'm going to start talking about some of the ones that uh, were previously published, um, but we have uh, since published uh, new revisions. Uh, this one here is the SFF TA-1016 um, internal sh unshielded uh, high-speed connector system. Uh, this one uh, comes in a variety of sizes, 38-pin, uh, 74-pin, 124-pin, uh, and 148-pin varieties and um, again they're used in uh, uh, PCIe and SAS. In fact um, I think I can say that the uh, uh, PCI SIG uh, uses this connector in in their uh, new uh, Gen 5 and Gen 6 uh, internal cables and um, so we, we made a, a couple of fixes in this uh, document. Uh, there was a uh, kind of an obscure case where um, somebody was using a right angle uh, board connector and had it mounted somewhere in the middle of the card um, instead of on the edge of the card. And they discovered there was a uh, remote potential for some mechanical interference between the mating plug and and the board itself uh, when it tried to plug into the right angle connector. Typically in the middle of a card, um, you know, most of the time uh, the vertical connector is used instead of the right angle and so you'd never see that issue. Um, and if the right angle connector is used on the edge of the card, uh, again, you still never see that issue, uh, but that was something that we were able to solve and 
um, by adjusting some of the tolerances. And then, of course, then there was also another, uh, um, found an error in the document uh, where we had uh, put a couple of dimensions in the wrong order in the table. Uh, so we had to flip them around, put them in the right spot. Um, next one here is the uh, SFFTA 1009. Um, this is the uh, pin and signal specification for the uh, EDSFF form factors. And um, obviously these are uh, popular applications for this are the SSDs, CXL devices, accelerators, and NICs. Um, so we've added some uh, optional uh, I3C support. Um, and uh, we've also added uh, some uh, NIC sideband support and some additional clarifications were added for uh, some of the LED behavior uh, in the uh, EDSFF devices. This next one here is uh, SFFTA1002. It's a uh, protocol agnostic uh, multi-lane high-speed connector. Um, it's essentially uh, uh, an I.O. and card edge uh, connector and mating card interface uh, capable of up to 112 gigatransfers per second, PAM4. And um, it comes also in a couple of different varieties, the uh, 56, uh, 84 pin, 140 pin, and 168 pin varieties. Uh, obviously, these are uh, used in EDSFF, uh, the OCP NIC 3.0, and OCP uh, DC C, uh, CSM, SCM. SCM. We have the typo there. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what we've done on this uh, new revision of this document, we've we've added the uh, 32 gigatransfers per second NRZ uh, signal integrity requirements. You can see an example in the uh, upper right there um, for the orthogonal connector. Uh, it was already there for the, uh, for the other versions of the connector, uh, but we, uh, to make the document more complete, so we added it also for the orth orthogonal version. And then uh, we've updated some uh, uh, tolerances on the uh, length of the pins on, on, on the cord. And, uh, and then we've added a new uh, board thickness uh, for the straddle mount uh, version. Um, so there's an, a, a new um, uh, variant for a large earth for a thicker uh, host board. All right. Uh, so the next one here is SFF 8636. Um, this document actually gets updated uh, fairly regularly. Um, this is the management interface for, uh, it's used for four lane modules and cables. Um, the, uh, uh, so this is, you know, used for the QSFP that we talked about earlier, and also for the mini SAS HD. Um, and uh, so this, we just um, added some, uh, we had a request for to add some uh, transceiver subtypes and uh, fiber face type identifiers. Um, so those were added into a uh, table and and then there were some editorial changes and a few uh, uh, updates for some naming conventions. Um, and, I, and actually, if, there, if you have uh, additional questions about that one, um, our BOF tonight, um, we're hoping to have a couple of our uh, people from our transceiver subgroup available. Uh, to help answer questions on those. Uh, this is the SFF 8614. Um, 
it's called the mini multi-lane uh, by four and by eight uh, shielded connector and cage. This is essentially your mini SAS HD. Um, this was, um, uh, this is the mechanical specification for it. And um, obviously it's, it's used in uh, PCIe and it's also used in SAS. Um, comes in a one by one and a one by two and also a one by four to handle uh, uh, four lanes, eight lanes or 16 lanes. And uh, so the changes that were made uh, for this is we added a new SMT footprint. Um, and the big reason for that was there were some concerns that the um, plated through hole design of the original Mini SAS HD uh, could have some additional challenges um, as the data rates increase. Uh, so we've now added an SMT footprint option and, uh, and then there were some uh, clarifications to some tolerances as well. Uh, next one here is the um, SFF 8402. This is a specification for the SF3 Plus by, um, by one pluggable transceiver solution. Um, essentially, this document it gives you references to what other SFP documents you're going, SFF documents you're going to need uh, for implementing a SFP transceiver and there is, it gives you the uh, management interface document to use, the general electrical document to use, uh, the mechanical document for the connector, and the mechanical document for the cage and module. And uh, one of the things that we've done is we've added uh, the SFP 112 uh, so there's additional, uh, there's a, an additional figure there that uh, uh, directs people. Um, one of the new things for the 112 is uh, using CMIS instead of SFF 8472 for the uh, management interface. Um, and then we've made some uh, clarifications to a portion of the document that references uh, SFF 8472, um, which defines the memory map. And uh, so we uh, had some editorial changes for that. And uh, this one is the SFF 8024, uh, SFF module management reference code tables. Um, so these tables, um, we've, so we've added some additional um, media interface codes, ID codes, and um, there's a kind of a list of several of them there in the, in the samples of the tables um, that we've added. And uh, so for some new applications where, um, where the, the uh, products are being used. Uh, we keep getting requests to add more and more uh, media interface IDs, and uh, so that's another re another document that uh, gets updated fairly regularly. And then uh, I'm going to have Anthony come back up and and uh, talk about some additional changes and things that we've done over the last year. Have to fix the mic again. Um, so one of the things that we were running into, and I think this was even a complaint we had last year, was um, our website kind of stunk for how you would search for specs. And so one of the things that we did was we updated our search profile, um, reorganized it to make basically finding the project simpler. Um, and like, for instance, one of the problems that we have is, let's say you wanted to look at, hey, what's all the drafts that are going on or what's the latest publications? Well, if you search for drafts, you wouldn't find the, them, the, the, the documents that have also been published but are being revised. And so you would not 
so you wouldn't be able to always tell, hey, what are the latest updates, because you'd be searching under a specific term. So in any case, we worked with our web developer and fixed a lot of these problems. So we're hoping that fixes the majority of people's problems with how you search. It also helps Paul and I as well kind of keep organized, because <laughs> as you can tell, there's a lot of projects going on at any one time in SFF. So, looking ahead, as far as what we're doing going forward. So, as I mentioned before, we've got seven new projects um, that are currently active, that are brand new, um, at various states. And by the way, you can kind of see from the numbering, you know, the lower the number um, is kind of indicative of how long it's been open. So like for instance, SFFTA 1024 has been open the longest, 1037 has been open, is the newest. And when Paul mentioned earlier, uh, 8614? 8612. Um, so, you know, we've had that project open for a number of years. We were finally able to recently close it, which was, which was great. Um, that was originally open before we became part of SNEA. Yeah. So, that, yeah, one of, the, one of the tricks with our numbering system is anything that, that before we joined SNEA is just SFF dash four digit numbers. And now it's SFFTA for anything that's post SNEA uh, or post us joining SNEA. Um, but in any case, we have these seven new projects going on. I don't really want to get into too much details, and um, we've got our BOF tonight, and I'm going to plug that in a couple slides. So I will hit it at that point. Um, I do want to touch on briefly kind of what are the specifications that are being revised, because as Paul mentioned, you know, through the, um, I think it's seven specifications that we've um, fixed in the last uh, year or edited or added clarifications to. Some of them you're going to actually see in the revised because these are all active documents. We're making updates you know, to either, either correct errata or add new features or et cetera. Um, you know, so 8024 right now, we're adding additional codes, IDs, and just making some other um, progress. I think as Paul mentioned, it's a pretty always active document. Um, 8419 is making updates for SFP 112. Um, and there's also some editorial stuff. A lot of these documents will actually have editorial changes going into them. 8472, um, adding registers into the management interface. 8613, errata fixes, clarifications, etc. cetera. Um, 8665, really minor, um, um, revision, just adding in some references, and 8679, some additional test methods. And then more, even more. Like I said, we have 20, I think 23 total open at this point that are currently being revised, um, or either being revised or are new projects. Uh, 8690, um, adding register additions, self-tuning bits, etc. 1002, um, which is one of the ones that we highlighted earlier. Um, we're adding in support for PCI 6.0 signaling for the vertical right angle straddle mount. Um, and uh, adding in a couple other things in there. Uh, SFFTA 1008, also known as the E3 form factor, um, addition of the NIC sidebands, um, which you saw in the 1009 spec. We're adding it to the form factor itself, so we actually have the cartridge to be able to support those NIC sidebands. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have a two by one C option, such that if you want to plug the drive into two slot or into two side by side slots, you could if the drive supported it. And some other clarifications. Uh, 1009, the EDSFF spec, we're also adding in the PCIe 6.0 support. Um, and uh, some a CXL LED and some other clarifications. Um, SFFTA 1020, um, this was actually a cable variant based off of 1002, so it's kind of like it, it, instead of having a cartridge, you're connecting to a cable. Um, and it also has some other variants of that connector. Um, we're adding in some additional sizes, thicknesses, and just fixing some other errata. Uh, 1026 is a, uh, we're doing revision for dual bay edition. I think this spec actually, we published this almost a year and a half ago. Um, but yeah, it's, it, we're adding in some additional features for that. And then finally 1027, the QSFP2 connector, um, making some additional changes there again. 
So, whoops. So, for the last few years, SFF has done a birds of a feather talk at Cinea Developer, Cinea Storage Developer Conference. And so, this is our plug for that boff tonight. So, if you want to learn more about the projects that are open, um, I don't know why I said 10, but uh, at least the eight new projects that are open, do you want to know more details about everything else? Um, the specs being revised. Do you want us to speculate? Do you want to yell at us about what's going on in SFF and why we're not doing something or doing something? You are more than welcome to attend the BOF if, or if you don't want to answer your questions there. And by the way, there will be snacks and beer. So if that encourages people to show up. But uh, we really want your feedback, right? Like I said, we have 76 members for SFF. Um, to quote the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland, there's always room for one more. So keep that in mind. We're always looking for feedback um, and we really want to, um, you know, get our specs, you know, more crisp. Like I said, we've got a lot of specs open. Um, and so the more people that can help contribute to those specs, the more we can, um, the more work we can get done. So lastly, if you want to get involved, some of the benefits of SFF, you get to help develop the specifications, give us feedback straight away, vote on specs, you know, fix all those things that we've talked about that we've already fixed. You can even help edit the slides that we just presented today. Um, as you found, we probably, we had, I think two typos in them, so. <laughs> Out. Yeah, those are the two that we pointed out. So, um, you have the ability to open new projects, right? Um, like I said, we have seven brand new projects, and there will probably be another one or two opening before the end of this year, and we'll probably have at least one or two probably being reopened to be rev revised by the end of this year. Um, you have access to all of our presentations, drafts, prior publications. What we post on, this, on the website is our most current draft and our published specification. We don't always publish, uh, we don't publish past specifications. And so if you designed a platform around, um, let's say EDSFF revision uh, 2.0, that specs basically in our archives now. And you know, only members have access to that. Um, and then, you know, always the most important one's the money question. Um, we lowered our, um, we're lowering our membership rates this year. Um, we used to be 1,500 a year, and we're moving to 1,200 per year um, to try to encourage more people to join and go from there. Um, and so you can kind of see the resources, resources below. Obviously, if you have any questions, um, you, can you can send it through. We, Paul and I are probably answering questions at least once every couple weeks from, um, from our internal reflector um, on, some ver on various uh, standards stuff. So that's about it. If, does anyone have any questions? Or are you guys just waiting to the boff? <laughs> Can we pay more to not help with the PowerPoint? Can you pay more to what? To not help with the PowerPoint. <laughs> Can we pay more to not help with the PowerPoint? Oh, you want more mistakes in our slides. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, this would be part of our revision process for SFF, so we can go and, uh, yeah. No, working in specs is one thing. Working in PowerPoint is hell. <laughs> yes. Um, I've not, yeah, we did review these slides, and there was multiple times, multiple times and we did fix the slides multiple times. <laughs> so it, it amazes me that we still find, at the day we've given the presentation, we found additional changes. Yeah, but that's also indicative of specs, right? Like we said, like you can see the things that we fixed that were errata or everything else, and that's just you know part of being an engineer. You're always going to find something wrong. That's what we get paid to do. Exactly. <laughs> Um, and one thing, one other thing I should note for the BOF tonight, uh, Mike Allison from Samsung uh, will be on the um, will be on the panel along with um, Paul and I, and then um, uh, John Gildman will be ho uh, hosting, emceeing the panel, and then we'll potentially have a couple um, people, Tom um, Palkert from Samtech and uh, uh, Vera. I can't remember Vera's last name. 
Kalia from Coherent. And so hopefully they'll be able to answer the transceiver's questions. Otherwise, we'll have Paul do a tap dance or something. So. I'll do my best to try to answer questions if they're not available, but hopefully they'll, um, they'll be able to attend. Uh, we're actually, we have got a, uh, we're gonna have a WebEx set up so they'll be able to attend. They, unfortunately, we're unable to get their travel approved to, uh, uh, to come here for the block event, but uh, we're, we're, with the technology we have, we're going to make do. That's good. One other thing I should say about our group, by the way, is, and it, hopefully this is apparent, we're not a marketing group, so we are very technical focused or tech heavy focused, so a lot of the people in our group just want to work on specifications and let's just get them out and get fixes in place or get new technology out there. So that's our primary focus more than anything else. Um, so, yeah. Other questions? I've done too many shameless plugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some of the people here, so I know they're familiar with the SFF. Can you speak on the mic, please? Yeah, oh, yeah. sorry. So, I know, I know some of the people here, and I, I know they're familiar with the SFF and and uh, the, the projects that we work on. And so, if you you know are, are not familiar with the SFF, uh, you know, and you have additional questions, just let us know. We'll try to answer them. That's it. Okay. Thank you.